Hey guys, Phil from Trail Talk here, and today we're going over my best value trail hardtails for 2021 under $1,500, as well as five worthy mentions as well. So like my other buyer's guides, I'm not here to waste any of your time. So the time for the first bike is up here, and then the timestamps for all the bikes, as well as links to those bikes are in the description. But if you want to stick around for around two minutes, I'm going to go over my criteria of what I really look for when I'm looking at these trail hardtails. Also, if you're on a bit more of a budget, I've got my buyer's guides for my best value budget hardtails under $750 in the description as well. Other than that, if you could subscribe and smash that like button as well, it would be greatly appreciated. In my budget buyer's guide, I talked about a bit of the compromises that you might experience when buying a budget bike. But when we're looking at these trail hardtails, we're pretty much getting all the features of more expensive bikes. And what I mean by this, got a bit of a list here because there's a lot of things to go through. It means you've got a tapered head tube, hydraulic disc brakes, air fork, dropper post, booster axles front and rear, one by drivetrain, and around 120 to 140 millimeter travel fork up front. And the trickle down effective geometry of more expensive bikes has definitely reached this point to where these bikes almost compete with the most expensive ones out there. So you're getting longer reaches, steeper seat angles, and we're getting head angles sub 67 degrees, mostly around that 66 to 65 degree mark. Unlike the more budget oriented bikes I talked in my budget buyer's guide, these bikes are ready to hit the trails and handle some real abuse. No square tapered bottom brackets or anything like that. These things are ready to shred the trails. So if you plan to really wanna take up mountain biking, hit the trails and don't wanna be visiting the bike shop to get stuff fixed all the time, or you just love a good trail hardtail, these are the best bikes I could find that balance performance to price. So when it comes to price, that sweet spot where we start to see all these features I talked about on the better value bikes is $1,500. And then in Australian dollars, that's 2,100 Australian dollars. And then around 1,200 British pounds. But with a lot of bikes that we talk about, there are some models in the lineup that are slightly cheaper. So if you want a really great frame, but you're on a budget, want to upgrade later, those bikes are definitely a great option. So check out the whole range in the bikes that I'm talking about. But for me, that sweet spot is around that bike around the $1,500 mark, and that's the ones I'm gonna be covering here. So I'm gonna be covering five bikes from around the world, so there should be something in your country that you should be able to buy, as well as five worthy mentions. But this list was really tough, so they're pretty much 10 bikes that I really recommend. And as I said earlier, all the links to all the bikes are in the description, as well as the timestamps as well. So without further ado, let's get into the first bike. First up, we have a bike that comes in a little bit under budget at 1,799 Australian dollars and 1,399 US dollars, and that's the Norco Fluid HT1. You get a 470 millimeter reach on the size large, as well as a trail ready 66.5 degree head angle, short 430 millimeter chainstays, and 74.5 degree seat angle. As well as this, you get a nice low standover and short seat tube too. So all round, pretty damn dialed. The wheel size is also size specific with extra small to medium size bikes coming in 27.5 and medium to extra large coming in 29. The spec is pretty good for the money considering it is a little bit under budget, but there'd definitely be a few tweaks that I'd make to get it to the level of the slightly more better value bikes on this list. But the great GON frame is what really makes this bike stand out for the price. Starting with the fork, you get a 120mm X-Fusion RC32, which is pretty comparable, say, to a RockShox Recon, which is pretty good compared to some of the other bikes here, but not the best. The brakes aren't the flashiest either with the Tektro HD M275s, so I would definitely be upgrading these to some more trail-ready brakes in the near future. You also get a 130mm drop Trans-X dropper post, which is great to see at this price, but 150 millimeter drop on the bigger sizes would also be ideal too. Moving on to the wheels and you get 30 millimeter internal width tubeless ready rims, which is good to see. And they're wrapped with Maxxis Ardent tires, which are fast rolling, but it'd be nice to see something slightly grippier up front too. Onto the drivetrain and you get the great value for money, 12 speed Shimano Dior drivetrain, so that's new for 2021, with a wide 10 to 51 tooth range on the cassette. To round it all off, you get a short stem and wide bars, and this bike is ready to shred some trails. I think this is a great value package, and the money is spent on the great frame, which is where you really want it, and it can really progress with you. So if you plan on getting the bike and having it for a long time, and upgrading it as you progress, it might be the one for you. Next up, we have the Vitas Santier VR, 
And like the Vetus Nucleus in my budget buyer's guide, this one has the best spec for the money, coming in at 1,999 Australian dollars, 1,299 US dollars, and 1,099 Great British pounds. The geometry might not be everyone's cup of tea, but the spec is where it's at. It comes in 27.5 and 29 inch models too, so pick your poison there, but let's dig a little bit into the geometry of the 29er. It has a nice 66.5 degree head angle, but the reach on the size large is 446 millimeters, so the shortest on this list, and the seat tube is slightly longer at 483 millimeters on that size large, as I said. And the seat angle is a bit slacker too at 73 degrees as well. So it will be a bit more tailored to someone looking for a more agile bike due to its more shorter nature compared to the other bikes on this list, but it should be able to keep you out of trouble on most descents. But as I said earlier, the spec is where this bike really shines. So up front, you get the best value fork at this price point, being the Marzocchi Bomber Z2 with a solid 140 millimeters of travel. You also get the new Shimano M5100 drivetrain, so that's the 11 speed Dior drivetrain with the 11 to 51 tooth cassette, so very similar range to what the 12 speed Dior offers, but you don't need that micro spline free hub, which is good. You also get a great wheel and tire package with the WTB 30 millimeter internal width tubeless ready rims with a 2.6 inch soft magic Mary up front and then a 2.6 inch speed grip knobby nick in the rear both in the snakeskin casing so proper trail ready tires here you also get a 150 millimeter drop dropper post on the size large and extra large and shimano m410 hydraulic brakes too to round it all off you get some wide nuke proof bars and a short 50 millimeter stem the spec really is a steal at this price so if you want the most spec for the money this is your bike and it's also prime for a frame swap if you want something more aggressive in the future. Next up, let's take a look at a true bike shop brand and that's the brand new for 2021 Giant Fathom 2 29er. And this is easily the best bike coming from the big three, coming in at 1,899 Australian dollars, 1,300 US dollars, and then 1,249 Great British Pounds. In recent times with the new Trance X and the Giant Rain 29er, Giant has really upped their game with the geo of their bikes. And being a bike manufacturer at their heart, like Polygon and Merida, they can leverage some pretty damn good prices. So let's start with the geometry of the bike, and they really nailed this. So you get a slack 66 degree head angle, steep 75 degree seat angle, 435 millimeter chain stays and a roomy 470 millimeter reach on the size large. This is very similar to the fluid from earlier, but ever so slightly better for descending with that slightly slacker head angle. The frame is made of giant super light alloy with three bottle cage mounts too. So it's pretty damn light and give you plenty of options for your hydration and then also mounting some accessories too. In terms of the spec, you get 130 millimeter travel SR Suntour Radon 34 up front or a giant Crest 34, so there must be some issues with supply chain, so it's kind of a bit of a lucky dip here, but either option is great at this price. You get the ever-reliable 12-speed Shimano Dior drivetrain, so very popular this year, and it's definitely a bit better than SRAM SX that we're seeing on these bikes last year. Onto the wheels, and you get Giant's tubeless ready rims, and then a dual compound Maxxis Aggressor in the rear, and DHF up front, both in the XO casing, which should get the job done well, but I would upgrade to a 3C Max Terra DHF up front once it wears out. You also get a giant dropper post and house brand wide bars and short stem too. The only real letdown is the Tetro TDK 143 brakes, which lack a bit of power, so this would be my first upgrade. Overall, it's great to see a big brand like Giant put a lot of thought and R&D into a more trail-oriented hardtail at a great price, so good job here. The second last bike we have is the Merida Big Trail 500 coming in at 1,849 Australian dollars and 1,250 Great British Pounds. Unfortunately, they aren't available in the US, but our last bike is, so definitely stick around. The Big Trail has been freshly updated for 2021, built around 29 inch wheels, and it looks like a great package. Starting with the geometry, and reach sits right between the Vetus and the two other bikes at 455 millimeters on the size large, but you're getting a nice slack 65.5 degree head angle and a steep 75.5 degree seat angle, so pretty damn good here. The frame has a super low seat tube and standover too, and there's room for two water bottles as well as a mount for accessories too. 
So it looks like they've really been listening to what the market wants in terms of all this stuff. Looking at the spec, you get some big travels. So you get 140 millimeter RockShox recon up front, which gets the job done. You also get the very popular for this year, Shimano Dior M5100 11 speed drivetrain. As I said, you get that 11 to 51 tooth range, which is great too. You also get a long dropper too. So 150 millimeter drop on medium to extra large bikes. Onto the wheels now, and you get Morita's 29mm internal width tubeless ready rims, racked in exo casing dual compound Maxxis dissector tyres, which should be nice and fast and give plenty of decent grip, but as I said, always like having that 3C Max Terra up front. A slight downside is that you get the Tektra M275 brakes, so this would be my first upgrade, as I said, along with that 3C Max Terra compound up front. Like the other bikes, you get a short stem and wide bars, rounding off a very impressive trail ready package. What I do like about this bike is that you can get the frame on the Big Trail 200 for 1200 Australian dollars, which is a good platform to upgrade on. But if you can afford a little bit more, I think the top of the line 600 model is definitely the way to go. And then you get the Marzocchi Z2 fork up front. So it's priced very well in Australia, not so much in the UK, but that would be my pick if you can afford it. So now for the last bike on this list, and no surprises here, it's the Marin San Quentin 2 coming in at 1,299 US dollars, 1,899 Australian dollars, and 1245 Great British Pounds. This one's built for those who want an aggressive 27.5 inch hardtail. Developed by Matt Jones, you can really tell what the intentions of this bike are when you look into the geometry. You get the slackest head angle out of all the bikes on this top five list at 65 degrees, a roomy 464 millimeter reach on the size large, and then a steep 75 degree seat angle. It also has the shortest chainstays on the list too at 425 millimeters. So if you like to shred, manual and have fun, this is the one for you. Looking at the spec, you get 130 millimeter RockShox Recon up front, which is pretty good considering the bike is $200 under budget. In terms of the drivetrain, you get the 11 speed M5100 Shimano Dior for the derailleur and shifter and a Sunrace at an 11 to 52 tooth cassette. So definitely no complaints there. You also get a long dropper post on the medium to large, so 150 millimeter Transex dropper there. You also get some aggressive tires too, with the 2.6 inch V flow snap tires, and they're on Marin's 29 millimeter internal width tubeless ready rims. To round it all off, you get a nice solid cockpit too. The only real downside, like a lot of these bikes, is the brakes with the Shimano MT201s, which definitely do lack a little bit of bite. So I definitely recommend upgrading the brakes if you really want to push the bike to its limits. This bike is for someone who really likes to throw around their bike and do some more difficult descents. And as always, if you do live in Australia and want to get the bike, I do have an affiliate link for Bicycles Online who sell Marin. So if this buyer's guide did help you out, it would be awesome if you could buy through that link in the description below. So there you go. There's my top five bikes for 2021. But before you go, definitely stick around. We've got five more worthy mentions. And as I said, this is pretty much a top 10 list anyway. So any of these bikes are going to be great value. The first bike is the white 529 V3. And this bike is an absolute beast with a 65 degree head angle and then a super long reach at 485 millimeters on the size large. It comes with a RockShox Recon Dior 11 speed drivetrain. So if you want an absolute 29 shredder, this one's for you, especially for our UK viewers out there. Then there's the Rocky Mountain Growler 40. And like the Fusion in my budget buyer's guide, this bike absolutely rips too. This one's a little bit out of budget, but you do get a super slack 64 degree head angle and 475 millimeter reach on the size large and great spec for the money too. So if you live in the US and Canada and want a hardtail to handle something beyond your regular trail hardtail, this one's a great option as well. Next up, we have the Nukeproof Scout 290 Comp. There's also the 275 if you want to get that one. This one's a little bit out of budget too, but the spec and geo is really good as well. And if you're looking for something a couple of hundred more, this one's definitely worth a look and it looks like it absolutely rips too. The Specialized Fuse is a great option too if you want a bike shop brand. It might not be quite as good as the Fathom for the money, but it's definitely up there and the frame is meant to be really nice too. So you can't really go wrong here as well. To round off the list, anything from Ragley Bikes as well. At the time of filming, their 2021 bikes weren't released, but they'll probably come out with several bikes worthy of being in this list. So definitely keep an eye out when the 2021 bikes come out as I would definitely recommend these as well based on what they had last year. I know a lot of you are gonna ask about the Trek Roscoe and Common Cell Meta HT. 
but the spec that you're getting for the money and geometry isn't quite as good as the bikes mentioned here. They're still great bikes, but as I said, the other 10 bikes here would definitely be my picks. So there you go, we've come to the end of my buyer's guide for my best value trail oriented hardtails for 2021. This is gonna be great for someone who really wants to start pushing it in mountain biking or someone who just loves a trail hardtail. Again, if you're on a bit more of a budget, definitely check out the other models in these bikes lineups. There's definitely some cheap ones that offer some great value too. Or check out my budget buyer's guide as well. There's some great options there around 750 US dollars there too. These videos do take a little bit of time to research, but I do love doing them every year. So if you wanna stick around and follow them every year, definitely subscribe to the channel. Also drop a like and then leave a comment too. Did I miss any bikes out? Or let me know which one's your favorite. And as always guys, thanks for watching. See ya.